Kathy Wood has recently been on CNBC, and she's made some very bullish and interesting remarks and explanations towards Tesla. So we're going to give that a listen today and we'll respond. But just before we get into that, if you want to be notified every single time I buy or sell Tesla stock in my own portfolio, or you want to come and talk to me and other great, great investors about Tesla, investing or anything in between, consider joining the Patreon. It's less than a cup of coffee per month. I'll leave a link in the description below. You've been very bullish on autonomy, yes. uh, vehicle autonomy and ETF all around it, mm -hmm. robotics and the like. What do you make of what's happened with Cruise, yes. the shutdown of Cruise, at least the temporary suspension yeah. of it? Uh, Derek Hazrashahi, who runs Uber, was on the broadcast last week. He said he doesn't think that autonomy, in terms of autonomous vehicles or robotaxis or the like, are a real thing for another five or 10 years. Meaning he's, a, and by the way, I think five or 10 years ago, he would have said, five or 10 years yeah. ago, that was what, you know, and so. And so, so would Elon, and, yes. And so, so here we are. Yes. So what, have you changed your view about that? No. I mean, you must have, because I imagine if we go get tape of a conversation that we all probably had five or sure. 10 years ago, we probably said five 20, or 10 years 22, from now. 22, 23, right. 24. We, we actually uh, delay ours by one year relative to Elon, so maybe it should be two years, but. She makes a good point there. As Tesla investors, we know this. There has been many times in the past that Elon Musk has been a little bit over-optimistic on his timelines. In the recent podcast, actually, that he did with Lex, he said this himself. He said that he does tend to be over-optimistic, but he does always deliver. And I don't think that will be any different with FSD. I really do think this is coming. I think it's happening. There is amazing progress. It's just a matter of when, really. And something as big as FSD that will literally change an entire industry, change the way we travel, that is going to have a lot of different hurdles to jump over, regulatory impacts that are going to have to be navigated. It's not going to be as simple as just releasing a new car, even though I'm sure that is not simple by any means. But this whole idea of FSD that then leads into a, an entire robo-taxi fleet, a fleet of autonomous vehicles, is the main thing within ARK's, ARK Invest's price targets. It is the main factor that causes them to make such big and bullish and bold price targets for quite a short time period, quite a, a near distant uh, a date really. So they have the bull case, ARK Invest, which is obviously led by Kathy Wood, the bull case of $2,500 per share by 2027. Obviously, we won't just log on and see Tesla stock as 200, uh, 2,500 because it will go through uh, stock splits. So we won't see it as that massive number, but 2,500 per share by 2027 is their bull case. Their base case is 2,000 per share by 2027 again. And then their bear case, if things happen, but they happen slower, 1,400 per share by 2027. So you can see that they are very, very bullish on Tesla providing FSD and a robo-taxi fleet, eventual robo-taxi fleet, become the reality. That's what they're basing these big numbers on. Their model assumes that robo-taxi launch happens by Q4 2023. That's for their best case, their best case scenario. That's what the model will assume to give that, that biggest number. That is clearly not happening. It's getting very good and it's getting very close, but I very much doubt with everything that needs to happen with this, that we will see a, a full, full self-driving, you know, fully solved by Q4 2023, considering that's where we are now. The worst case for them assumes robo-taxi launch of 2030. Now, obviously that's still not that long away. However, I think that is way more doable. And she also made the remark there that they actually push their dates out based on what Elon's doing, because they know that sometimes he gives a date and then he will move it. Their model was actually released in 2022 um, and they, they've been pushing it out. And now they've pushed it out obviously to those dates of 2027. So very interesting. I do think it's a case of take everything, take dates that Elon says with a pinch of salt. He's a very optimistic person, but I do think that we can definitely expect this to happen and everything there is aligned, ready for it. So let's continue. Here's where we've learned how important Tesla's uh, proprietary data is. Uh, it's 5 million robots around the world. Cruz didn't have anything like that, it had hundreds. Five million robots around the world collect data every day and send it right. back to Tesla. Tesla has more corner cases, which means disengagements, accidents, uh, information like that, than all the other companies in the world combined. 
And I have to tell you, watching the breakthroughs in AI that we are seeing, they are astounding. The, the speed at which this is moving. Right. Uh, so it is interesting. I think it's a data issue. Autonomous taxi platforms uh, are the biggest AI project in the world. And therefore, we think Tesla is the but biggest you have sold, AI you've sold Tesla. She makes some good points there. She said that Tesla basically has the data advantage. They have millions, they have so many cars out there using FSD every single day. And that's with the driver obviously supervising this. It doesn't just go out on its own like the cruise vehicles and we, we, knew what, we know what happened with that recently. So whenever the driver has to step in or there's a mistake made by the vehicle when it's using FSD, all of that information is collected and then it's fed back to Tesla. With that information, Tesla then retrain the network and basically make improvements to the vehicles, to the full self-driving. Not just bad data. So anytime data is showing that FSD needs improvements or a driver had to step in there because the car didn't recognize this, that's good information too. But it is also giving data of safe driving because ultimately full self-driving needs to be safer. It needs to be a safer option with evidence than a driver driving a car. That's the point of this. Then Tesla has the very, very difficult task of actually selecting which, are, which bits of that are useful data. Of course, they are receiving so much data, extraordinary amounts of data each and every day, and they couldn't possibly utilize all that data to train their models, and most of that data will actually not be useful at all. So they do have the, the tough task of actually selecting the useful information and using that to train the models. So we saw in Tesla's Q3 update letter that the Tesla FSD beta fleet has now passed the 500 million mile marks. That is so much real world data that Tesla is collecting and that is where they have the real competitive advantage. So there are essentially two bottlenecks to solving autonomous driving. The first one is that you have to have enough data. At the moment, as it stands, Tesla is the only company in the world with the amount of data that they need. They have the data advantage. They have had that for quite a while. However, for a long time, they suffered by the second bottleneck, which is having enough compute power to actually train the models using that data because they have the data, but they then need to be able to use that data to train. That's where the compute power comes in. For a long time, they were really struggling with that. It actually seems now that they've made the advancements to be able to handle all that data, that data volume, and they are no longer struggling as much with the compute power side of it. However, there is absolutely no real competition here. Cruise and others combined, like she said, have nowhere near the amount of data to train the models, let alone the compute power to actually do it. Now, I don't have FSD myself. I wish I did, but I don't. However, I do follow, I, I keep a close eye on this and I follow a number of people on X um, and on YouTube that test this out every single day. They go out in their Teslas and they drive for hours a day just testing FSD. And what I can see from the data, from the videos that they post, it is very clear on just how good this is now getting. Now here is a graph of tes different Tesla S curves. And I've seen a few pictures like this of the various uh, Tesla S curves and they're very, very interesting. Now S curves typically show the technological advancements, developments, um, referring to different innovations over time. So what you can normally see with an S curve is that at the start, the uptake of that new technology, that innovation is really slow. You know, it experiences slow start as it as it picks up and it's normally quite expensive and, and whatnot during those initial initial time periods. And then it will experience a period of absolutely rapid growth. That's where that S sort of goes vertical. You can see here on this graph. And then it will level off at a point. That point is called uh, saturation or maturity. It's just when the markets have been saturated with that piece of technology, that innovation. That's not a bad stage to reach at all. It's a natural part of, of, of the development. So what we can see just by this is that actually the FSD uh, S curve for Tesla is one of the biggest. And that is because the market potential is huge. And that's why she said autonomous taxi platforms are the biggest AI projects in the entire world. The market potential here is huge. It's real world AI, so it's very, very useful to, to everyone. And it highlights the transformational potential that this has, that FSD has towards the transportation industry. It will literally revolutionize that industry entirely. 
there will be a point in the future, you know, many generations to come that will look in textbooks. Probably they won't be using textbooks then. They'll probably be using the metaverse. <laughs> They'll look into the metaverse and they will see that, you know, we, we were driving, we were manually driving our own cars and, and they'll be, their minds will be blown because they will think, why were they doing that? What a waste of time. But it's interesting to see how these things develop over time. And then she said at the end there, and it was slightly cut off, that Tesla is the biggest AI player. I agree. I agree that Tesla is one of the biggest AI players out there with FSD, with Optimus and everything else that they're doing. There's no way now that we can call Tesla just a car company. The, the proof is literally there that they're doing more than most companies in terms of real world AI. Tesla shares, and it's, you know, it used to be the number one holding, I believe, mm -hmm. in, your, in your ETF. It's now number three. You've sold yes. about 20 million shares. Yes. Why? So, um, well, whenever it goes up, it was up uh, about 150% relative to our other names, many of which had not moved. So we will all, always um, uh, recycle that way, take profits. And uh, I would also say, listening to Elon on the last conference call, he's very concerned about the economy. Mm. As we it's quite interesting seeing the screenshot there of the tes of Tesla stock, two hundred and twenty eight dollars per share. And this was this this interview came out twenty hours ago when I'm filming this. In pre market right now, Tesla is two hundred and forty dollars it goes to show how quickly this stock moves. And actually, that reminds me, I saw an ex post um, from the head of investor relations at Tesla, Martin, I, th I forgot his last name, but he was basically saying that there's two big growth stages of Tesla. And the next one is when they release the, the mass affordable compact vehicle. I can only imagine when that happens, when that catalyst strikes, what will happen to Tesla stock. Now there's no knowing, like it could literally go down on, on the release of a compact vehicle or the news of a compact vehicle come in because that's happened. It's a very volatile stock, but it does move quickly and it does move fast. And it seems to be doing that right now. Anyway, what was she saying there? So she was talking about the question of why are you kind of selling if you've got these visions of Tesla for the future? Why is she selling if they're so convicted on this position? It's a good point. It is a good point, but I think that you've got to remember she is not a retail investor like myself or you. She's going to have a very different strategy because she's having to manage large amounts of money on behalf of her clients and other people. Because of that, it's kind of necessary for her to try and take some profit off the table when a stock goes up, take that profit and actually put that money back into maybe a position that they are convicted for as well that is underperforming in their opinion. And she will have to rebalance her ETFs very regularly. So trimming back a stock like Tesla when it's had a little bit of a run does make a lot of sense. This makes her firm and therefore the customer's money. And it helps keep their portfolio balanced as well. What I will say though is sometimes it seems a little bit questionable in terms of the timing. But hey, I guess market timing is never meant to be easy. It also flags the question of is she a true long-term investor or more of a trader? I've seen that argument go around. And maybe she's doing this because ARK want to keep the percentage of Tesla inside of their ETFs at, a, you know, around a certain percentage. Maybe there's that as well. I did have a look on the ARK uh, website and in the ARK flagship fund, Tesla is now the third largest holding and it's sitting at 8.59% of that fund. So it's still very substantial. This will, this amount, this 8.59%, uh, I expect that to move up quite quickly as the Tesla stock rises, which it currently is. And then I imagine she will trim it again and sell some, maybe if it goes over 10%, I'm not really sure. However, in her ARK Q fund, so a different ETF that she's got, it is still the largest position and it's actually over 10%, it's 13.11%. So she is selling and taking profit, but also it is still one of the largest positions in, in her ETFs. People obviously, will make their own judgment on that. Let me know yours in the comments below. Then she mentioned that Elon um, had some concerns over the economy and they share those concerns and they might be trimming back a little bit because they don't think the next one year, five years, however long, is going to be that nice and kind to Tesla. Of course, when the economy is struggling, it does have a knock-on impact to lots of companies, including Tesla. People are just naturally not buying as expensive items. They are not spending their wages on $50,000 vehicles, They're just simply not. And obviously uh, loans get more expensive and things like that. However, we did have yesterday 
the news that the US um, inflation is coming down. So that paints a slightly nicer near term for Tesla. Then actually, we had uh, Ron make some very bullish remarks about the mass affordable vehicle, that 25,000 euro at the moment vehicle that we're expecting. So again, that should be very, very good news for Tesla. So let's continue. Kathy, will, will, you, will I look outside five years from now and see GM and Ford EVs everywhere? It's very interesting to hear both of them pull back saying, but do you uh, think with, I, I, with this new way, I, I think I don't even know if we'll be talking about GM so and Ford in five years. What is interesting about the news that both of them are pulling back for profitability reasons, they can't be profitable in this space unless they scale. That's how this so works. It's catch 22. So it's catch 22 and their shareholder base is very internal combustion engine oriented and they want their profits now and they want their dividends now. Uh, and they don't want that kind so of how they going to do it? Losses. Will they be able to? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is, back to the Tesla question, as they are pulling away, I, our market share uh, expectations for Tesla go up. Right. You know? And so to answer the question, we sold as it was up 150% relative to everything else. We have not sold m much since then. And it will, all, it will, if we're right on this autonomous uh, taxi opportunity, it will remain in the top five in, right. in our fund. It is true that other companies are not making a profit on their EVs at all. We've seen Lucid, uh, Ford, GM, many, many companies that have an EV vehicle or an EV range even, and they are losing so much money per vehicle. I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars per vehicle losses. It's quite insane. Whereas Tesla is actually making profits on their EVs. So these other companies are producing relatively attractive and, you know, quite nice EVs. I've seen some of them. I thought, oh, that's a nice car. And I don't even like cars that much, which sounds weird as I'm a Tesla investor, but I do want a Tesla. Anyway, we move on. <laughs> um, they're making really nice cars, but they're not making money on those. They're actually losing money. And as a business and as an investor that you are buying a piece of that business, that is not good news. Now, the likes of Rivian, they are still losing money, but they are losing less money per vehicle as time goes on. That's a very good sign. But even so, these other companies are very, very much reliant on their internal combustion engine cars for money. And then they're feeding that money into their EV area that is losing money. So it's not sustainable over time unless they change that around. However, what Kathy said there is that in order to make profit, you have to be able to scale. We know scalability is, it comes naturally for Tesla now. They are very, very good at scaling a product up. They are insane at production, at manufacturing. Their, their ability to manufacture effectively and efficiently is unlike most other companies. As other companies sort of die off, what she was getting at here, the market share of Tesla will naturally go up. Now, I don't think that Tesla will ever own 100% of the market share in EVs. I think it would be very naive of me to even think that. But I think the next five to 10 years is going to be very, very telling on which companies actually decide to take their EV business very seriously and make it happen. And the ones that continue to lose and maybe end up going bankrupt. So we'll see. Let me know your thoughts on this interview in the comments below and come and join the Patreon and get access to the Discord if you want to chat to me every day and get notified when I buy or sell any Tesla stock. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video very shortly.